Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. Um, no reason for it really, other than things are weird at the minute. And we've actually had a crash and burn a couple of few days. Um, we've had a crash and burn a couple of months. I'm deeply in my flop era. But uh, today we're going to make a top. Um, because it's bank holiday Monday and I'm going to set you down over here. And I mean, I'm kind of giving myself a day off of like applying to jobs. So we are going to make, let me pick it over here. I'm going to be making the Peppermint Paddington Top. Um, this was done in collaboration with, so it's Peppermint Magazine. It was a free pattern um, and it was with uh, French Navy patterns. So I've read through the pattern. Um, I get it. I'm maybe not going to do all of the steps. Maybe we'll talk about that when I get there. Um, but it's a very cute top. I'm not probably just to say I'm not going to be doing the buttonholes for sure. Just not going to be doing that. Don't feel like it. Uh, and yeah, this is a fabric I'm using. I'll give you a better look at it in a second. Um, but I bought it when I was in Spain a couple of weeks ago. And it's not actually linen, but it's like a linen feel, you know. Um, and I'll give you a good look at it in a second. But I'm kind of making this because I'm going to Mexico in a couple of weeks and I'm very excited I'm going to see my friend there. So yeah, I thought it'd be cute to have a new little new little top. Um, there's quite a few sewing projects I need to get done. So I'm thinking, why not film it? Uh, so I'm gonna lay this out, give you a good look at it and we will just get to cutting the pattern pieces. Okay, so I have you very precariously balanced there. Um, this is the fabric. I cannot remember how much I got of it, but I actually got way more than I probably needed. Uh, even though I knew I was always going to make this top when I saw this fabric, um, because it's just the right weight and feel and everything. But also, um, the sleeves, you'll see the pattern pieces for the sleeves are huge for this, um, because they're these big puffy sleeves. But I'll try and give you a good look at this Um, see if the, there we go. So it's got this really pretty pattern on it and you can see there's kind of a, almost like a very large seersucker look to it. Um, You can see that some of the, the it's like the stripes where some of it's a bit thinner, some of it's a bit thicker, Um, but it's really nice and lightweight and I just think it's gonna work really well for this and my nails actually go very nicely with it which is cute it's kind of a busy print but i think it'll go really nice with this pattern it's like a very easy summer top so i'm gonna lay it out and lay out the pattern pieces and get cut i think i've just figured out about this fabric i'm just gonna grab my uh little clips uh is that it is directional for sure like there the pattern is going in one direction which i hadn't really noticed before it totally makes sense uh but I had not noticed that, so glad I noticed it before I actually started cutting into the fabric. And I should say it's also pre-washed. Um, so some of the pieces are being are cut on the fold. So I'm about to do, do that first, and then we'll we'll go along with it. I should also say <laughs> I'm just looking at all the instructions. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, it does say to use interfacing on the facings. I'm not going to be doing that um and there's just some other there's a lot of basting stitches obviously go to baste stitch to like stabilize some things but we're not we're not doing a lot of that so we'll we'll see we'll see how things pan out i guess but for now we're going to cut this on the fold also you can see here what i noticed is see so there's some that look like they're coming down but they're all coming from the bottom does that make sense so you can see it very much is directional so i'm gonna cut this and come back to you a long time since i've had the top of the sewing machine perch uh so all the pieces are cut out and i am going to do the basting stitch or like yeah is it, is it basting? um a stay stitch sorry um, do a stay stitch around the curved edges uh, because they say they're prone to like shifting and moving and with this fabric it's definitely kind of it'll move around and shift so I'm going to do that on the neckline I have so I have thread I have this kind of like creamy off-white thread um, 
that I'm going to use for actually the real sewing portion of it but I also have this white so I'm going to use the white and I have a bobbin there um, I'm going to basically do the stay stitch until the, this bobbin runs out and I can fill it with some of this but I don't know if I'm going to have really enough thread for things I'm kind of nervous on that front um, but I did already consider doing like a contrast stitch um, to sew down the um, what do we call it facing because uh, I had seen just the way the illustrations are it kind of shows it and it's maybe like an inch um, that you sew it down so I'm thinking maybe I'll do that um, with a contrast colour because I would have stuff that might work with that that's an option but I guess we'll just see how we go for now um, or maybe I'll use it on the cuffs or something like that but for now we're going to stay stitch the the rounded edges of the sleeve like the top of the sleeve which will be the neckline because it's like a raglan sleeve um, and then the actual neckline and then I guess we can start to assemble it and yeah I'm kind of ignoring if you see this pattern I'll have all this pattern like linked down below um, the whole thing with the like fold line at the back and whatever I have made a version of this top before I'm I'm just gonna close it at the back I'm not gonna do any of that fold line stuff but what's great about this pattern is it does not have darts which I love so I'm gonna do that and then we'll check in I've decided I'm gonna piece them together here um, at this desk it's not like a big sewing table it's just a regular desk um, so it's a little small and I still have obviously the sewing machine on there but did I notch this? Mm, right okay maybe it's actually the wrong sleeve we'll get to that in a second I'll figure that out when I'm not talking but I'm gonna do it here um, I sewed the facing which is the next step but I just because it was right there and it was smaller and I didn't have to figure it out um, so this is all good so I'm gonna try and sew this before I eat my lunch and then I will press it so that it's ready to go to the next stages but um, I think it's looking really cute I think the print will look really good as a top but I remember finding the sleeves of this pattern really confusing before um, I'm still confused now so Okay, this is what we are working with. That's the front. Ugh. Boom. Okay. <laughs> so, that is, it's gonna be like, kind of cropped, I guess. I cut it full length. I won't be hemming it a ton, probably, because I want it to be able to like, to, the, these jeans are gone baggy. But, no, actually, it'll be fine. The length it is. Uh, the sleeves are not these big battling situations. They will be puffy sleeves. Um, just to kind of get a look for the, the colour, etc. Uh, I think it's looking pretty good. But I'm going to press it, press the seams and all that, and eat my lunch. And then I'll be back. Lunch has been out. Uh, seams have been pressed. So, now I think I'm just going to clip these threads while I talk. Um, I'm just going to sew in the facing. There's all of these, like again if you download this pattern there's a lot of instructions around like inserting the facing and like basting and stuff like that I'm not gonna do that um I'm just gonna do it like I would typically stitch in a facing um which obviously requires a lot of like pressing and stuff like that but I'm gonna do that um and then maybe go down and press it again or maybe I will figure out the back of the top first um, before I go and because it's just such a hack like having to switch on the sewing machine um, or not the sewing machine, the iron because um, it's got to heat up and everything so I think that's what I'm going to do now I'm just going to kind of construct it as is logical um, the sleeves will be la the sleeves and the hem are obviously last but there isn't a whole ton else to do the only other confusing part might be how I choose to close up the back 
but I think I know how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to simply like close it as in sewing two right or wrong sides together with a pretty generous like it wouldn't would it be a seam allowance but it would be like double uh, just so it'll use up some of the space and then I will press it to one side and maybe do two rows of stitching down to like hold it in place so that it's not a seam that's like flapping around in there uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do but we will decide that when the moment actually is here um, but for now, I'm just gonna pin in the facing. I often have issues with facing. I think I'm just not that skilled at doing it quite yet. Um, I'm gonna try really hard. I feel like the next like hour is going to be me going downstairs to iron things and then coming back up to sew them but I have so I sewed down the facing and then I sewed it in and then I pressed it lift it for a second then I pressed it you know what I mean I pressed the seam one way and then fully the facing down you know what I mean so I have my handy dandy little clippies here um but I think it looks cute. Now what I'm what I'm considering is do I use use a contrast thread? Because the issue is with the contrast thread, my stitching is going to be so much more visible. And is it going to be that neat? That's the big because I don't want my little wiggly wavy <laughs> lines of stitching to be visible, but I think it'll be a better finish than the white thread because the white thread is slightly visible. But you can, if you can tell here, let me see if I can get it to focus. I just don't really like the look of it, and especially if that's the, in the wrong side of the fabric, that being the right side of the fabric. I don't know, so I'm gonna look through, let's look through, bring it with me, my threads. Let's see what we're working with here. See, I feel like this pink or this like teal greenish color, I feel like this could be a really nice one. Um, I'll see if the bobbin, if there's a bobbin round, I'll do it. Got it there? Yeah, we're gonna try this one. The stitching is not straight. Um, I mean, what did I expect? This. So it's fine. I'm taking off the clips because I'm not going to redo it in white because I think either way it is actually gonna look better with this contrast stitch or contrast thread. Um, but yeah, is fine. Is fine. Uh, I'll show it to you here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. there's just a couple of wavery bits but and see it's not super super contrast you know it's just there I'm pretty happy with that I am actually going to refer to the instructions <laughs> those are my clover clips um, okay so I was supposed to sew in the facing kind of first I was just also kind of ignoring those instructions um, but I am going to sew together the side seams um, and do that before closing up the back, I guess. And when I then press, just trying to scoot you back a bit. Um, when I'm pressing that then, it's because I have to just keep switching out the thread now. Um, I'm going to take out this green and I like it as a good, it's a good color match for this, but I'm not going to use it for um, the inside stuff. So I'm going to use the white again for the um, for the side seams and for the um, inside of the back seam. But for the visible stitching, I'm going to use that green. But I don't know if I'll use it on the sleeves. Maybe I will because it's like you know not that um useful for other things um but i guess i'll do side seams I keep saying the same thing side seams back closure and then i'll press all of that and then do i do the bottom hem maybe i'll press the hem as well as the sleeves when i go down and i'll do like a big ironing session and then i'll put in the elastic i can't remember what kind of width 
of an elastic it calls for but I think I'm going to use quite a thin like not a super super thin but I have a big box of elastic here so I'm just going to go through that I'll probably use something quite lightweight and quite thin um just because I just want it to be more of like a billowy blouse than anything else so it doesn't need to have like big old puff sleeves because because of especially the weight of this fabric it's very soft and crinkly and stuff so I will sew these side seams in and the back seam closed and then um oh but I will show you I think I said before I don't know what I'm gonna do you know with the as far as the how much of an allowance I'm gonna do in the back seams um I'm going to use the end of the facings using the end of the facing as my guide so it's from that point and using that amount which is probably what an inch and a half to two inches that um I'm definitely going to be able to pull my head through this so it's fine so just makes it easy you know So the neckline is, okay, I think it just needs to be pressed actually. Okay, that's kind of cute. It's not, it kind of seemed like it was a full length top, but it's it's a little more cropped, which isn't a problem, but I'm just saying, because I'm not very tall, I should, you know, say that I don't have a long torso, um, and I'm like not even five foot three, so. Um, but I think it's gonna be cute. Side seams obviously are done. And the back seam, I closed it with a very large uh, seam allowance. So I'm gonna press, especially the back, and I think I'm gonna press the hem. And then maybe the sleeves, like the hem of the sleeves while I'm at it. Um, because there's nothing really stopping me from doing that now. I'll bring my little clippies to keep it in place. But I will then like figure out the elastic and stuff well like obviously stitch the hem and then figure out the elastic but i'm going to be keeping the hem pretty small i feel like i don't know if you can see this maybe if i put this here okay like okay so these are these are high-waisted jeans but it's only here you know does it kind of all kind of scoops down on the back that's cute um kind of up in the front now maybe it's because it doesn't have darts and stuff maybe if i kind of yeah, no, if I just needed to scoot it forward, that's actually kind of what it was. It was hanging further back. Um, I just needed to, like, hoosh it forward. Um, I can't remember what size I made this in either, so, sorry. I'm going to go press this and sew the little hem, and I'll probably update with elastic. Okay, so I lied. I said I would come back when I was doing the elastic, but as you can see, it's completely done. So, um, this is my overall, I'm not going to do like a sit down review of it, I'm just going to talk you through it now. So, the top is a little bit short, but it's still long enough to tuck into the front of jeans like this, and I think that's how it kind of looks best. Um, there's another clip of me on TikTok, I'll have my TikTok linked below. Um, but the sleeves are a very cute length, I like it. The neckline, I maybe, it's fine, it needs to be like pressed and just like worn in because it's kind of pressed weird from, you know, the facing and stuff like that at the minute. But I think it's a very cute top. Uh, this is a free pattern, so it's a great one to just have and practice. Oh, I should show at the back, I did not do the uh, buttons. I just did, I hope it focuses, um, and I just sewed it down the, like, panel kind of bit in the inside, um, and it looks really neat, and it's fine. The sleeves were a bit confusing to do and um, I just found the shape of them hard to make the channel for the elastic um, and I just used like quarter inch elastic I used very light elastic which I had said I was going to do because I wanted it to be not very like tight on the arms but overall I think it's a really good pattern and that's also I didn't really follow the pattern so and then I didn't follow the instructions but I used the pattern that's what I should say but I have another that pattern was done in collaboration with French Navy now or French Navy patterns um, and I'm looking down here because I have another pattern that I purchased from that designer um, where this one is free so I'll have this linked down below I'll probably be making the other French Navy pattern 
next sewing video I do, which I don't know when that'll be. But overall, I think this is a really cute top and I would recommend the pattern. Um, it was super easy stitch. It's done in like an afternoon, like a couple of hours and it's completely done. There aren't any particular notions that are needed for this. So like bias or a certain type of elastic, certain type of thread. There's nothing is needed like that, which I think is what makes this a really easy stitch. Also no darts. So that's it. Um, it's cute. It's done. I'm going to wear it all the time. And subscribe if you haven't already follow me on instagram at anime by design